Welcome back, Zero K fans, to another exhibition match. This time, Seisdrum versus Kloon on Iceland. That very large and honestly not that. It's weird. It, it's large, but it doesn't feel that large. But Clone's going for large, because they're going for error. Where Sizedrum, on the other hand, going for shield bots. And yeah, that's why it doesn't feel very large, because bots work surprisingly well in this map. Yeah, so the bandits. A couple bandits coming out here. It looks like Clone going straight for the crane. Not going for anything offensive right off the bat, which is fine, because cranes work beautifully on this map. It's big enough that they work well, and of course they have this island expansion. That's totally free, but mainly it's just they can go around where their opponent doesn't expect them to be. Although, it, is Clone going for something proxy? I don't think they are. I think they're just going straight for south southeast, that's it. I don't think there's anything too tricky right now. Sizedrum, on the other hand, is going for pretty standard. A few bandits for scouting, then worker, and then continue to build more bandits for additional assault force. Yeah, Clone right now, okay, just setting up a radar. Probably going to expand here and then build up some more over in the south. They probably don't expect that... I mean, Sizedrum doesn't expect them to be here very quickly. People don't go for air on this map very often. Not as a starting factory. This is unusual. And Lordy pointing out it's very old school. And kind of is, yeah. At least for Team and For 1v1, it's something that was coming yeah, a year ago. Yeah, I do kind of remember that. Like, before Gunship really got popular, air was played all the time. Like, everywhere. You just saw airplanes just built. That was the thing. Actually, large, largely what it was was Ravens. I get the Ravens, bomb the commander out, and then that's it. But once the Raven speed got reduced when they were attacking, that stopped happening. That became much less popular. And Clone having a hard time deciding what to build. Went for a Raven, going for a Phoenix now. Phoenix is probably the better option to deal with everything here. Ravens just have a hard time attacking anything due to their speed. And the Bandits, they know what's up. They see what's happening, they die for their information, but they get it anyway. Or do they get it? Ah, they do get a metal extractor. Oh, they do. Oh, so close. Almost got that metal extractor. Valiant effort on the part of that bandit there, but unfortunately did not quite manage. Still, the important thing is they know the air is coming. Now, are we going to see vandals? Are we going to see more defenders? Are we going to see, I guess, cobras? Because razors are okay, but against air, I think... Usually hacksaws or cobras are... Actually, cobras are not that popular. I don't know, no, no one's built Cobras, but... Razors? Razors aren't always the best choice. But it looks like Sizedrum going for Mass Defender. That is their counter of choice. And Clone just setting up pretty strongly on the southeast. Already starting with some defenders, probably going to get a few more defenses up here. Yeah, getting a Lotus, then starting up with the expansions. So Sizedrum's southeast area is basically no longer theirs. And I don't think they care. I don't think they're paying attention to that at all. Because right now, Sizedrum does not have radar coverage of that area. Clone, on the other hand, they do... Where's Clone? They... They do. They have plenty of radar coverage over the entire south of the map. But Clone right now, in a good spot for information. They basically know what's up. And they're also at a major advantage now. They have... Basically, they have a staging ground. That's, I guess, the biggest thing that this is for them. The entire south side of the map now is theirs. They know what's there. They can send planes along the south side. They don't have to worry about having any straightforward defense. So Sizedrum sets up anything between them and Clone at the... Well, as the crow flies. It doesn't matter, because Phoenixes don't take the same path. Phoenixes take their own path. In this case, they can just fly south and then back up. Same with Ravens. Crows are really bad at taking clever paths. They're, they have to go straight forward because they're so slow. Anyway, clone with clo with the Cloakabot switch. Which is actually probably okay for Sizedrum because while Sizedrum has built a lot of defenders, they haven't built a lot of anything else anti-air. Like, how many? Three Vandals? That's nothing. They have, at this point, three Vandals and three Bandits. They can easily switch over to Bandit production and defenders work fine against most Cloakabot units. Warriors not so much, but against Glaives? No problems. So at this point, I'd say Sizedrum has actually done a pretty decent... Well, they had done a pretty decent job when it came to not worrying too much about air. Getting a lot of Vandals, though, they don't know about the Cloakybot switch. They can easily deal with it, and they're not going to have to worry too much about getting harassed in their main base. Because defenders do work well. But they are going to have to worry about the fact that anything outside of their main base is now fairly vulnerable. 
and they don't even know to worry about it, which is a bit problematic for them. They're gonna find out, and it's going to be painful, as they've just found out that clone has been set up over in the southeast side of the map for some time now. Probably a bit of a surprise, but at least they now know and can deal with it. Actually, how much do they know? Okay, they know about the metal extractor, so I guess they can infer the rest of it. But still, at this point, Sizedrum is not liking what they're seeing, I'm sure. The one advantage, though, they do have 10 metal per second on Klon. Just static economy, 10 metal per second advantage. And I mean, Phoenix, Phoenixes can do what they want. Ravens would be a bit of a better option. They can one-shot metal extractors. Phoenixes, I think, might be able to. Not sure. They're basically dealing about... Okay, they should be able to. 25 times 15. Yeah, that's... That should be good enough, because that's about 460, I think. 475, I think, to in total, but they don't deal it all in one spot, which is the problem. So whether or not they burn out a metal extractor kind of depends on a few different factors, whereas ravens just straightforwardly kill it. But... No one at this point has, like, they have the glaives, but they reveal that they have glaives, and they only have two, or three, I mean, thirds in production, but at this point, all these defenders are going to be fine. Like I said, Zystrom can very easily transition to anti-ground from here. They've got really nothing in the way for doing that. Not sure if they're going to go for felons, probably not, it's a outlaw thug, but felon might be going a little bit too far. With sharpshooters, or specters as they're called now, Cloakie does have the counter to felon. Yeah, see, this is exactly what I mean. The defenders are doing fine. There's no problems here. Clone's having a hard time transitioning away from air. And honestly, I'm not sure I agree with the use of the phoenixes there, especially if they're being used for economic harassment. This is where I'd use ravens. Despite the fact that they have to dive, it still works. And glaives coming in. I mean, one of these glaives will pretty quickly die. It takes two shots to kill a glaive, and defenders, of course, have three shots per, per volley. Actually, this defender's, this defender's done. This area is actually pretty open. The bandit's coming in to save everything, but that convict... Ooh, is that gonna die? So close! Gloan didn't quite manage to kill that convict, but still did some damage. And now, are we... Yes, we are seeing a bit of an economic harassment over to the north. The thing is, the phoenixes are fine for dealing with large armies. They're okay for dealing with economic investment. But they're not great in that regard. They're also considerably frailer than ravens. Like, ravens aren't the be-all, end-all. They used to be the be-all, end-all. Holy crap, were they ever the be-all, end-all. They aren't now, but they aren't bad. Like, they aren't unusable. 1,000 health, 400 damage a shot. Or, sorry, 800 damage a shot. That's still a lot. Like, they still wipe out metal extractors, no problem. They wipe out most things, no problem. They wipe out caretakers, no problem. They wipe out commanders with a few shots. Like, the commanders are the problem because the commanders can easily dodge it. They can run out of the way and it's no problem. And most ground units will just deal with them as well, because they'll dive. So it works out no problem. But Phoenixes... They have harassment potential. They can really soften up a force, but when they're spread out like this? Not really, no, actually. Not that effectively. So Sizedrum having a major advantage. The clones air ground switch really didn't benefit them too much, just because Sizedrum could easily transition away. They hadn't invested a huge amount in anti-air. What they had invested is still useful. And their defenses were flex. So the air to ground switch wasn't that much of a mix up. Which kind of sucks for Clone, because I mean, they were clearly. They were relying on an air ground mix up there. And that can work really well if your opponent invests heavily into anti air, especially dedicated anti air. And then you can get a strong ground force that just rips apart their anti air when they don't expect it. It's beautiful, but at this point, Clone kind of gave the game away. That first glaive attacking stuff, that pretty much gave it away before Clone could get a large enough army that Sizestrom wasn't prepared for it. And even like I said, with that, Sizestrom had defenders everywhere. And now they have all the more reason to keep putting defenders everywhere. The only downside is that Sizestrom isn't exactly that invested in the ground. They have half a dozen or so bandits compared to ten glaives, and that's after some fights going in Sizestrom's favor. And Sizestrom trying to take out the southeast as well, just keeping that contained. At least making sure it's not a staging point. It hasn't been a staging point for some time, but Clon, they're still trying to use it as a staging point. They're still going south. Those phoenixes are giving it their all. 
And these glaives, taking care of the bandits at least. Like This is still a thing. Sadistrum's still not in the best position. Switching over straight to a Dante, though. Alright. that They have the money for it. I can totally see why they're doing it. But that's basically it. They're gambling on that Dante. And now... The end of the Defenders. At least in the southeast. But there are so many everywhere. The, pro the problem is that the Glaives can't get through. The Phoenixes can deal with it more or less okay. But the Glaives cannot get through. And they can now, but they can't get through a line of Defenders. They just can't. Glaives in a line of Defenders is a bunch of dead Glaives. Once you have enough Defenders that you're able to pretty easily deal with the Defenders that are there, it's not even a question. Like, once the Defenders have enough time to let the other ones reload while still covering them to kill off the Glaives, the Glaives can't get in. Rocket Switch is a bit of a better idea to deal with the defenses, but even then, it's kind of tricky. Because really, the, the Phoenixes are doing pretty well at getting rid of the defenses, it's just that there's Vandals everywhere. And Clone, they should know where the Vandals are. I think they do. Yeah, they have... They should have a decent idea where the Vandals are. Well, they do now. If they didn't before, they certainly do now. And down goes one of those Phoenixes. How many are left? Like, four? Six. And no rear... Oh, no, there was a rear arm pad. Okay. So Clone's definitely still invested into air. Sizestrom's still invested into anti-air. And Rogue Outlaw Thug, that is the current composition. No more, very few bandits, one bandit left. Other than that, not much. So both players are definitely considering the Raider phase to be over. I don't know if I agree. Iceland's a map where the Raider phase can last the entire game. Just due to its size and how easy it is to avoid things. Like, it's very difficult to lock off the entire map. And to set up this mid-ground, or this mid-field front line. That's not something that really happens on this map. It's one of the things I like about this map, actually. It always keeps it interesting that way. When the anti-air getting torn to shreds, Dante doing what it can, and actually doing quite a lot. The Dante being pretty much the focal point, but over in the southeast, Sizestrom's force is not really able to deal with Clone too much, and Clone getting rid of Sizestrom's anti-air handily. That one defender saving the remaining half, basically half the Vandals died there. Still, there's still a dozen left, though. Some of them are still iron back. They're coming up front lines, but they're... They're there, like some over here, some over here. But that Dante. That Dante did a number. Got rid of the commander, got rid of most of this front defense area. And of course the Vandals there is support for the anti-air. Clones Roccos may be getting through okay, but everything else is having a hard time. Even Clones Roccos are actually having a bit of a harder time now. Sizestrom's economy is just being too big of a problem. Uh, okay, that needs looking at. I don't know what just happened there. Nope, it looks like that... Okay, that was weird. Okay, apparently the number the number four is not printable. I didn't realize that was so profane, but apparently the spectator panel believes so. That was, that's okay. Seriously, that's really weird. Not, not sure what's going on there. But anyway, Sizedrum able to break through the Rocco line, and at this point, pretty much has this game in the bag. The Ravens? Okay, there we go. This is what the Ravens are for. At least part of what they're for. And that Dante needs to get out. Needs repairs. Where are the convicts? No support convicts for the shields. That's actually really surprising. The Vandals will not be able to save this, but the Dante's not going to die. Th oh, it did actually save it. The Dante wouldn't have died to the Raven, but it got saved. Vandals there just in time to save it. But still, the amount of damage that was just dealt. The only thing that Clone... One of the things that Clone does have, though, this entire southeast area is still theirs. They still have a fair amount of money over there. They're economically behind, but they've got a fair amount of money. And they're not broke. There's economic advantage, and actually, it's also production advantage. Clone pushing into the air, but they're out of energy. Yeah, it looks like they... No, they didn't have a whole lot of energy up here, but still, they... I mean, losing their commander was a bit of a blow, but I guess they just never didn't have a solid energy foundation to begin with. Of course, this shield wall is getting damaged, but that's not enough to be worried about. The Dante, having recovered a little bit... No, it hasn't recovered any of its own. It does have regen, doesn't it? How did it have combat regen? 
Mind you, I suppose that wasn't exactly out of combat there. And more ravens coming in. Getting rid of a couple of vandals, and a couple of vandals getting rid of a couple of ravens. Really risky strategy, but it is starting to work out. How many vandals? There's only two vandals left! Yeah, that actually was a pretty valid strategy. Another Dante is being constructed, but Sajim really should probably worry more about support forces. They do have a gunship plant coming in, but I still think they need to be worried about support forces because they are losing their ground army. Very rapidly losing their ground army. And even though the Dante was able to deal with some damage, they haven't... This is still some control. Like, Clone can still come in here and send units through this area and have this as a nice little semi-safe place. And definitely is a way of like, going over the water and up through this defended area. It's worked before, they can have it work again. And a Dante still in a tricky position, and it's about to die! Down goes that Dante! Did a good job! But unfortunately, not quite enough. However, a replacement has been built, so everything's okay for Sizrim. Except, of course, for the lack of support forces. They need more Vandals, they need more... Probably... Everything, really. Vandals being the big one. Klon investing very heavily in air, not that heavily in the ground. They have some Glaives here and there, but... The main shield ball is doing okay. Bandits would help against the Rockos, but otherwise, their main shield ball is doing okay. The main problem, like, the Dante with Vandals would probably be the best thing to focus on right now. So, Clone might have a way back in. Sajrim was doing quite well, but Clone's now rebuilding. They've got Caretaker over the north. Are they building a proxy factory? Because I think they are. Either that or reclaiming a bunch of energy. Either way, that's not something that Sizedrum wants to have there, but they are not aware of it. And Sizedrum now trying to take out the southeast, revealing that they have gunships, but surprisingly not getting tridents to deal with these. Like, the ravens really do need to die. Bear in mind, ravens can actually hit gunships. Like, gunships can be bombed. Worth pointing out. And Sizedrum continuing to go for the southeast, trying to get rid of all the defenders, and they're doing a pretty decent job, actually. They're getting rid of everything. This is working out. So Clone finally losing that southeast stronghold. Some losses were incurred for Sizedrum in the process, but still, getting rid of this area, I mean, opening this up for Sizedrum to take, that's a lot of money. Just consider how much is here. There's about five or six, yeah, about five or six metal over in this area alone. And on top of the fact that now, assuming this radar is destroyed, Clone won't know what's going on here. That's even better. Clone does not have the information advantage. They don't have this as a staging ground anymore. They actually, no, they still have it. Never mind. The radar was not spotted. Sizedrum did not look for that. So the information advantage is still Clone's, but the area is not completely undefended. And that's the important part. Fortunately, more bandits are in order and they aren't being built. Sizedrum might want to actually build some of those. Actually, never mind. No, the Rapiers will deal with that. So the Rapiers deal with the Glaives. And the Rockos. And there is no Gremlins coming up. Nor are there many Swifts. There are some Hawks coming in, which is actually, I think, better against gunships. But once again, Sizedrum still harassing. Clone just about to get economic parity as well. But no, that's not going to be allowed to happen. That would be silly. Why would you allow that? And the answer is you wouldn't. And now Sizedrum tearing apart most of Clone's... Like, this is Clone's energy economy and a bunch of Overdrive as well. Actually, no, not Overdrive. No Overdrive was really being used there. But Clone about to lose their energy economy. Like about twenty... Looks like 15, 20 energy is just going to be lost right now. With all these wind generators being destroyed. And if the metal extractors die too... I mean, the wind generators are the big one. You want to get rid of those. Metal extractors are kind of nice, but with the reclaim from everything dying right now, I'd say that the wind generators are the main thing to worry about. And that was the main thing they worried about. Now clones, once again, way down when it comes to economy. Their economy is far weaker than it used to be. Dante coming in again, but this time it's far closer. When it, if it, well, it's going to die. It has no support forces. Those ravens are going to come in and kill it. And that's going to be enough reclaim for clone to basically stay in for the rest of the game. And they might be able to come back just based off the reclaim alone. If that Dante dies in their territory. And over to the north, looks like it was just energy reclaim. Nothing else, just energy reclaim. And Sajram now aware of this northwest area. They know they have to deal with it, and they... Ooh, that Dante is so close to death. And the, va the Vandals are nowhere near. There are some Tridents coming nearby. 
actually quite a lot of tridents coming nearby. Tridents around the map just to make sure that the air does die eventually, but that won't be enough. Best case scenario is for this Dante to get reclaimed by its allies. I mean, actually, oh, nice! The Ravens are all gonna die, though. That's a lot of dead air forces from Clone. That might just turn it around. The fact that all their air... The entire air force just died. With the exception of a few Hawks and a couple Ravens, Clone just lost their entire air force inside of Sidestrom's territory. This is huge, or at the very least, in No Man's Land. That was a huge turnaround. Here I thought that clone was going to take it just from like Dante being in their territory, but nope. Sizerum pulled it back in time and managed to get their entire Air Force to boot. Sizerum's got a lot of metal to chew on right now. They are happy about that. Clone trying to deal with this, sending in Glaives, harassing where they can, but they haven't got a whole lot, and their economy has been behind this entire time. Mostly they've had decent type countering and... Good, I mean, they had good, great tactics, decent type countering, but that one airstrike did not do them any favors, and their economy just... just now getting parity has been behind most of this game. And with all the anti-air harassment forces coming in here, this is becoming even harder and harder for Clone to maintain map control. Sizestrom now taking the southeast, they're gonna pull ahead once again, and they have all this... I mean, I don't even know how much reclaim they have. In the southeast alone, they got like 900 reclaim. The area where their Dante died... 4,000-ish reclaim. Most then, well, okay. So that's easy to get is 2,000. Dante alone is 1,400. And they already reclaimed a previous Dante. This is probably it. I think Sizerum's got this. Clone, I think, is one more chance at comeback. Maybe if they can get rid of the Banshees. They don't have much to get rid of the Banshees with, but if they can, if they take this one reclaim zone... They're able to take this out, but I don't know if they are. They don't really have much to take it out with. I mean, Warrior Zeus might actually work okay around here. There isn't much that would deal with them right now. Like if you Zeus going over here, just tearing apart everything, that could do the trick. Or a couple, a couple well-placed ticks could also work. Taking this army down completely, and then... Well, okay, zapping this is impossible, but anything else, yeah. A couple well-placed sticks, but I think at this point that would be extremely desperate as a comeback maneuver. Might work, but clone being as far behind as they are, they'd have to pull it off, and it would have to be really powerful. Ravens for Banshees, good idea. Actually, why are not attacking the Banshees with the Ravens? The Ravens hit the Banshees. The Ravens hit the Banshees hard. Now, instead of going for the Shield Ball, not a bad idea either. Not... I wouldn't say the best idea. I would have gone for the Ravens instead. Sorry, the Banshees instead with the Ravens. Oh wait, you're sh okay. Clone's pointing out he's not. They're not sure if Ravens can still hit Banshees. That's news to me. I thought they always could. At any rate. Rocco's able to hold back a little bit. Clone able to get some reclaim. But the map control and economy is so far in Sizerman's favor, Clone needs something. They need a trick. Okay, we're loaded pointing out. Banshee does, would probably outrun the Raven. Not a bad point. I guess it's usually brawlers you see that used with, because brawlers aren't that fast and really with normally. Yeah, Sizerman at this point, all the map control. All the map control. No additional striders from the looks of it, though. Oh no, never mind! Additional Dante! Because why not? They lost two, but they've been just getting back all that metal. So another Dante coming in. There's only the one, right? Yeah. Yet another Dante coming in, which... There are quite a few Rockos to help deal with it. I mean, Clone is... Well, Clone is able to deal a bit of damage, but I think the Dante will probably tear apart most of this force. That's kind of the problem with Cloakybot in the late game. Especially when Striders come into the field, then it becomes even harder to deal with everything. There are a lot of Ravens, but there's also a lot of... The Tridents are still there. There aren't as many as there used to be, but still quite a few. Five Tridents. That's still enough to command some respect, but those Razors are causing a huge problem. The Dante, however, close enough to deal with them, and once they... Oh man, once that Dante deals with the Razors, nothing is left to stop Sizer from just going in whole hog with gunships tearing apart the main base. If these Razors die, there is no further counter. No other anti-air really has been built. The Hawks are, I think, all dead? 
Yeah, it looks like it. The Hawks don't appear to be anywhere on the map. So the Hawks are down. The Razors aren't down, but at this point the Factory's down. We're just about Air Factory's down. The Dante doesn't even, it doesn't even care. If it dies, it does not matter. This is going for endgame. Seismic just wants to finish this. Bit of a risky move. If Clone had anything else to build from this, it would be it. But Clone does not and throws in the towel. That is game. That was a good game. Really nice to see that air ground mix up still a thing, but kind of interesting that Seistrom managed to spot it and deal with it without too many issues. Good job, Seistrom. That was that was well done. So Seistrom takes that, which was a bit difficult, but yeah, the overall economic advantage they had over Clone, on top of the fact that they just had everything they needed to deal with the transition anyway, like defensively, they weren't going to get mixed up. So Clone couldn't do much with it, Oh yeah, the one thing, I think if that crane had gone around and built a bit more in the south, it really tried to invest in the south, it would have helped a lot to keep Clone in the same ballpark as Sizedrum economically. That would have helped a lot to keep Clone's army in the same ballpark, and probably would have been able to win from there. Because Clone was at a massive disadvantage economically that entire game. That was a bit in the middle where they got parity, and this is why I really gotta remember to put in a request for actually metal income over time. Like the actual income values, because that make it a lot easier to gauge this. But yeah, Sidestrom just had an economic advantage the entire game. And very, very little excess either. Well done. And yet, as you can see, Clone much more efficient. Far more efficient than Sizedrum. They just didn't have the economy to make it work out. That was the main problem. They just, If they had had gotten enough of these metal extractors down here with the crane, they probably would have been able to have the economy needed to win outright. Because they were not dying. They were very efficient. Up until the last 10 minutes or so, and not even, no, maybe 8 minutes or so, they were losing far fewer units than Seistrom. Oh, Clone pointing out, Ukraine could have gone from Northwest. Also a good idea, I did like the Southern Staging Ground. That was a cool thing, to have the South, the Southeast area be used as a staging ground. That was neat, just because it meant that it was a safe space for planes to go through to harass. It didn't get used much, though. The idea was pretty cool, but I didn't see it executed more than just the one time to hit this one metal extractor. So either Clone didn't really think of it too much, or just figured that it was the time to switch to ground. The anti-air was already built. Anyway, that was that game. So the last game is going to be another one between our first two players. That is going to be on... Where is it? That will be on Vitra between Rar and Dorsh. Actually, was that the first one we started with? No, we didn't start with them at all. That was a different schedule. Rar and Dorsh on Vitra. We have not seen them yet. That'll be up in a couple minutes, so stay tuned.